Hi, I'm Matt Alexander. I'm just going to talk to you about um, the work we've been doing to build a new website for Leicester City Council, which is launching um, in March 2015. So why did we need to change? Um, well, our existing website's been around um, for about a decade in its current format. Um, the Mayor has a very uh, very clear delivery plan about doing, um, doing more for less. Um, and getting our digital channels uh, in, into a fit state is, is a key, key part of that plan. So the public website is uh, integral to the smooth running of the council. Um, the people of Leicester and businesses and visitors use it every day uh, to complete various tasks and keep, um, keep informed of what we're up to. And we need to make it easier for them to complete those tasks online uh, and also digest important information about what we're doing. However, our current website is not always clear, its purpose is not always clear. Um, historically, a lot of effort has gone into maintaining content as an information repository um, or supporting very, very niche content for, for small audiences. Um, the quality and presentation is variable um, and it doesn't facilitate online processes. Um, it's always been structured around um, organizational ownership, so i.e. how we're structured internally as an organization. Um, the problem with this is that it assumes that our visitors have a an in-depth knowledge of, of, of the, of the organisation to find content um, and generally lacks focus as an engagement tool. Um, so yeah, it definitely needs to, to change this point. Um, we know that our customers are very frustrated. Um, these are some quotes from the recent soccer team survey that was carried out in 2014. Um, they all follow a similar theme really. It's very much about people not being able to find useful information. So it's about the, the quality of the, the navigation, the amount of content that's there that's unnecessary. Um, the last comment totally cheesed off with the whole thing, I think sums it up fairly, fairly well. Um, this is an example of a, a, a user goals matrix. Um, we know that users come to visit our website with, um, with def different needs in mind and you know, they might be coming as a resident one day, they might be coming as a business owner the next. Um, but what we do know is that there are priority users and um, they have primary goals. So in the top left hand corner of this, of this table is where we want to be focusing our efforts. So residents and common tasks, whereas down in the, uh, the, bottom, the bottom right hand corner are things that, we're, that are much more sort of niche information, I guess, where people will probably need on, a, a, you know, lower numbers and less often. Um, so that's the sort of, I guess, the long tail of, um, of where we're putting our effort into the website. We know that there are top tasks that are common to everybody, and these are things like make a payment, make a booking, uh, report problems, request a service, make an application, and find information. Um, so we're going to focus on those tasks and not organizational needs. Now that helps us break out of departmental silos uh, and uncoordinated content management. It helps us to focus on making things popular and simple. Um, so stuff like ordering bin liners, uh, reporting potholes, stuff like that, making it really, really simple to do. Um, it means we can consolidate our guidance and policies and keep them in, 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 in the right place. Um, you know, keep them in an area where it's logical for people to find them. Um, and also, organizational structure may well change. Um, you know, we'll, we'll probably evolve as an organization. We may merge with the county one day. We'll, you know, there may be political changes at the, at the top. So anything could really happen behind the scenes, um, which that shouldn't have an impact on, on what the customer experiences via the, the, the website front end. We're, um, we've reviewed the structure of the website. Um, so we're, we're now putting content where customers expect to find it and not where we would expect to um, to find it as an organization. Um, so everything has a, a much more logical home. Um, the website structure shouldn't really need to change too much. Um, everything that we do as a council should fit somewhere into this, uh, into this screen at some point. The other thing that's very important is we want very, very clear, um, very clear ownership and governance. Um, having an, inf an information owner at the very top level for each section is really important. Um, so in this example here, the person Mark Willis is uh, head of service. Now that's the kind of strategic level that we want. So that person, you know, they're not web publishers. They, you know, they won't edit any content. But what they will do is they will have overall responsibility for the kind of strategic direction of, of content and ensuring that it's um, it's it's kind of maintained and managed and, and continues to be fit for purpose. Um, they'll also potentially manage uh, various contributors who are subject matter experts who may well kind of do more day-to-day -day editing. 
It's important that we put content in the right place. Um, on this slide, there's a clear sort of hierarchy of content. So at the top, we have web pages. Um, nice, concise content, easy to understand, easy to maintain. Um, they're really there to serve top tasks, customer services, very important information about what we're doing, and articles and features about things that really matter. You then move on to PDF, which is where we'll be putting more in-depth guidance and documentation. Um, stuff like statutory requirements, such as Article 4s, um, that kind of thing. Branded publications will, will host as PDF documents. And then moving on to archive data, uh, rather than just retain uh, historical data, minutes of meetings and reference material on the website will we'll kind of move, as soon as it becomes out of date or you know it's, it becomes slightly obsolete, we'll move it off the website, possibly onto um, open data. Um, but there's this kind of continual sort of churn really of, of kind of content to make sure it's maintained and it's, and it's fresh. So where are we now? Um, well, we developed a new task-based um, based structure that focuses on the needs of the customer. Um, we have all of our final page designs and templates approved. Um, we've adopted a content management system. We are using Umbraco, which is an open source um, product. And we are, we're currently building the site in, um, in development at uh, alpha.lester.gov.uk. Um, we've now just actually launched a, a public beta, uh, which is at beta.lester.gov.uk. These are our new designs. Um, as I say, signed off, uh, try to be very visual, use lots of imagery, imagery where, where possible. Um, Leicester is a very diverse city and a lot of people don't have English as their, their first language. So um, the, the approach that we wanted to take was very much about using visual clues. Um, this is a section landing page. Um, they all follow this format. You've got three, um, three columns really. The first is your main kind of service areas. The second column is your um, most popular tasks. And then the third column is related information. That might take you off to another part of the site. <coughs> this is a standard content page. Um, very clear, nice summary, quick links at the top, which take, you know, if it has a call to action, it's very, very easy to scan the page and see. Page attachments, easy to, uh, to browse to. And we have the ability to drop a contact widget onto, um, onto any page as well. Um, that actually opens up a form um, rather than going to an email client. The designs are responsive, so they work very well on uh, mobiles and tablets. Um, the next steps really is for us to, is to kind of progress with the building of the site. So we're working very closely with information owners um, to really identify and migrate priority content. Um, we're thinking about the best approach for handling forms and other documents. Um, we're working with our, our contributors to actually get the content written and moved across. Uh, we're doing very little um, actual migration. Most of it is, is really writing new content from scratch. Um, we're finding that it's just easier to, to, to do it that way rather than sort of trying to kind of make sense of, of what's there. Um, and I think probably most importantly is we've, we've developed um, a whole new workflow system. Um, so we have better governance, editorial meetings set up, that kind of thing to really kind of help us maintain and um, and manage the content. Um, if anyone wants to speak to me about the project, they can email, email, email me at matthew.alexander at leicester.gov.uk.